Hello and welcome to The Mill. I'm your host, Dusty Crane, and this week I am returning from chaperoning a field trip uh, with my kids, feeling a little bit under the weather, so um, I am going to let Jamie do the heavy lifting this week. Um, a few few weeks back I did a very, very short episode and just kind of summarized some news that I had seen. I thought, let's do it again. You guys, I actually saw a request that, uh, hey, please do, do this with the live stream. So I went ahead and watched this week's Facebook live stream right in my video editor so I could chop up the good stuff for you. So I went ahead and put together... I think it ended up being like 16 clips or so or something. I was hoping it would be 10 so I could say my top 10 news bits, but that didn't end up working out. That's okay. I won't drag this on anymore. Without further ado, here is Jamie to present the news. Just a few hours ago, we went live with a Viticulture World wine bottle label, label maker. It's just a virtual thing. It isn't something that you can actually, well, you probably could print it out. But uh, if you go to the Viticulture World page on the Stonemaier Games website, I'll post a link in the comments below so you can see it. Uh, there's now a big button in addition to the launch sign up request form. There's now a big button there where you can go and answer a few kind of personality quiz style questions to create your own custom wine label that you can then, I don't know, you can you can share it. And basically you can share it, you can have it, you can just see it, you can use it when you play your first game of Viticulture World if you want, even though it isn't a game about making wine labels. It's just a thematic little thing that Ryan and Vitaly and Dave put together behind the scenes for you to enjoy. And that is somewhat of a little reminder that Viticulture World will almost definitely go live for pre-order on Wednesday. I'm excited to finally share this with you for pre-order. We've been waiting for all the different parts and components to arrive at the four different fulfillment centers that we use, but uh, everything currently is looking on track for that to happen. I think there's one last thing that we need to arrive in Canada, but everything else has arrived, and I'm pretty sure, well, we won't launch unless the thing actually has arrived in Canada, but I think we're, we're good to go for our pre-order launch for next Wednesday. Carlos says, in the past you've mentioned your struggles to design a deck building game. However, some of your latest design notes and 10 things I learned from videos have been for deck building games. Does that mean that you might have found an initial design that you're developing? Um, Deck, deck building is still something that I want to work with someday, Carlos. That is something that, that uh, it's a, I think it's a really cool mechanism that um, still has design space open to it, as we've seen in the last few years with games like Dune Imperium and Lost Ruins of Arnak that use it as part of the game, but not as the sole focus of the game. So it is still definitely fascinating to me. It's still on my mind all the time. I'm still just interested in it, and that's why I think it's on my mind for, for videos Red Rising's one-year anniversary is coming up on the 28th. What day is that? Is that that's Saturday? That is Saturday. So, Red Rising this weekend. Get it, get it to the table if you want. Um, if if you're in the mood to, to or if you're trying to choose a game this weekend, Red Rising anniversary. Get it at the table. Share photos in the Red Rising Facebook group or on Instagram. I'd love to hear what your final hands look like. And I'm going to try to play this weekend too and share my hand. We'll see how my final hand of cards compares to your final hand. George says, will there be a book club this week? There won't be. Thank you for asking about that, George. Uh, I'll generally announce book club on Sunday, and I think I'm in an every other week pattern right now. So the next book club will be most likely next Thursday. Jerry says he saw in my Instagram post for Boone Lake that Alexand Alexander Fister is open to collaborating with you. You've worked with Paolo Mori for Libertalia. Any other designers you're working, you are working with or would like to work with? My dream pair up would be you and Vitala Serta. I appreciate that, Jerry. Um, there are a few designers that, that I highly, highly respect, but whose games don't click with the way my mind works. And unfortunately, Vital is one of them. I really, really admire his designs. I mentioned I played Art on Mars just last night, but I've never had a game. I've never played a Vitalis sort of game and thought I really want to play this again right now. It is not an insult at all to his game designs. Uh, I really, really do admire them. I admire how well he integrates theme and mechanisms, but I don't think that would be a good pairing in the end. Um, as for Alexander Pfister, though, a lot of his games do resonate with me, and I Love Sky is one of my favorite games of all time. And I reached out to him years ago and said, you know, I really admire your work. I really, I really love what you what you think about, how you have the flow of your game designs, the decisions you make, and I would love to publish a game with you someday. So I, I hope that's a possibility for Alexander Pfister. I would gladly do that for Uwe Rosenberg. Um, I don't know, I can't even start making the list because there are so many amazing game designers. I'm not going to mention any spoilers, but I am working with some very talented, amazing game designers right now on some projects that uh, that will come out over the next few years. 
that I'm really excited about. Several of which are, are newer designers. They aren't designers that you would have heard of yet. Um, yeah, and one, a, a couple of them are, are not. A couple of them are, are a little bit more experienced, more famous designers as well. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll see what, what comes of, of the future with those, those game designs. Christopher says that he's looking forward to the Wingspan nesting box. Any updates on progress and timeline? Uh, just the timeline that's on our website right now on the news page, that's still the timeline for it. I think we're, we're still aiming for Q4 for pre-order and release. The exact timing of that will depend. I mean, if the, if the pre-order happens a little bit later, then the, then the retail release might happen in, um, in 2023, early 2023. But that is currently what we're projecting for the next Wingspan expansion and the nesting box, the first print run of which will include the next Wingspan expansion inside the box. Gerald says that Rado says that he loves Viticulture World, but he'd love it even more if he could go higher or lower, if he could increase or decrease the difficulty level of each world he enjoys like other cooperative games. Do you have any plans to develop and release that online for free, kind of like Tapestry Changes? That is actually built into the game already. Um, the default difficulty for each, um, for each continent is to play the cards in order. The difficulty emerges when you shuffle up the continent cards for each continent and play them in a random order. So I guess Rado didn't realize that that's already built into the game, but that, that is already built into the expansion itself. Yeah, we, we definitely planned ahead for that. Uh, Steven says, Chrissy e at the Dice Tower had a very positive review of Altama Factory's Terra Mystica solo mode. Are you proud to have discovered those guys? I don't know if I really discovered them, um, but I, I think maybe I, in a positive way that I enabled Morton um, to, to create Altama Factory. He was already creating Altama modes for fun, and I invited him to make one for Viticulture through the original Tuscany Kickstarter campaign. Um, the Altama mode is now built into Viticulture itself. But, uh, but it's fun to... It, yeah, I, one of my favorite things about my job is creating opportunities for other people to, to thrive at what they're passionate about. And um, I have to give all credit to Morton for what he's created and his whole team now that he, that he has created. But I do get a, a little bit of, I don't know if pride is the right word, but it feels good to, to see uh, what he's done with, with solo modes for many Stillmire games and a few non-Stillmire games as well, like Terra Mystica and uh, Guy Project. Kevin says, uh, would you ever consider selling SDL file upgrades for components on your website for your games? It would be great to have official files to 3D print and blank out our games. I think that's something that I'll probably lead, uh, leave for 3D specialists. There are lots of people who talk about the cool 3D printed things that they make for our various games. And sometimes they sell them, sometimes they give away for free. But uh, that is not something that I think we are experts at. That's, we, we design components for the purpose of mass producing them, not for 3D printing. Um, and if we do invest heavily in something that we are mass producing, then we tend to keep it proprietary, especially for miniatures. Um, we don't we don't openly share the SDL files for those. So, Kevin, I appreciate the question, but I think that's something best left to to third party accessory creators and enthusiasts and like kind of three D printing enthusiasts. And if you're active in any of, any of our Facebook groups, you can see the awesome things that they create and that oftentimes they're willing to share. Mario popped in to say, "How many game expansions do you expect to release in 2022?" How many do we expect to release? Well, what have we done so far? So, so far, this we've done, I'm talking about games and, and expansions in general. So far, we released, um, is Libertalia, yeah, Libertalia, Viticulture World is coming up. So, this is the first expansion. So, Libertalia, first game, Viticulture World, uh, first expansion. And then, I hope I'm not forgetting something here. And then the next uh, Wingspan expansion. So that's two expansions and one game. Those are those are the. So I think it'll be three things, th three pretty big things this year, and we'll also have some new promos for Rolling Realms. We also did the puzzles last month, and I think we'll have neoprene mats for Red Rising and uh, and Tapestry later this year. Uh, Renee says regarding the comment of Rado, he already did that mixing the deck. Okay, good. So he's tried that, but he means like a controlled way of increasing difficulty, like in Pandemic. Um. Yeah, we didn't we didn't do that. I, I, I you know, I, I that isn't uh, that is something that I typically do with cooperative games. And I think we are since we already included two levels of difficulty and we included continents of scaling difficulty. I, th I think we have difficulty covered pretty well in Viticulture World. I appreciate Rado or anyone wanting more. That's also always cool. Maybe the designers will come up with something that they want. You could always play with one shorter year, try to do it in five years instead of six. Um, but given that we already have built-in continents with different, uh, with different difficulty levels and within each continent you can place 
the cards in order or shuffle them and play them randomly for a higher difficulty and variability. I think that covers it pretty well for most of the people that are going to play Viticulture World, even dozens and dozens, dozens of times. Yeah. Um, that's my thinking right now, but who knows? Maybe Mahir and Francesco will want to add some other way to add even more difficulty later in the future. I should be open to feedback about that, especially as I am working on a cooperative game. Yeah, it really isn't. It's interesting because I, I, I don't think often about scaling difficulty in cooperative games. I, I, uh, I, I, I guess I don't play many games that many times that I want to scale the difficulty. And I think many of the, the great cooperative games that I play um the difficulty the difficulty is where i like it in like the default mode of it like i'm thinking of uh, uh mysterium park i just posted about that on on um on instagram today i've never played Myster mysterium park and thought i wish this were more or less difficult like i think they hit the sweet spot for the difficulty i think there's maybe a niche of players out there who want to play mysterium park all the time and want a way to increase the difficulty but I think for them, it's probably pretty easy for them to do it. Like just give the uh, give the ghost fewer cards, um, that type of thing. It isn't that difficult to add. But yeah, it's important for me to keep that in mind that that there is a small percentage of gamers who like to vary that difficulty level quite a bit. Um, I do have a surprise for you later in the year that's somewhat related to this topic, but I don't want to spoil it yet. I'm kind of eager to talk about it, but I don't want to spoil that yet. And it is not related to my big open world cooperative game, which is not ready for this year. Gerald says, that's interesting about the Viticulture World Shuffle Deck. How do you make sure Africa is easier than the standard way? And then how would you make it more difficult? Remove cards and shuffle. In Pandemic, you add or remove Epidemic cards. How do you make sure Africa is easier than the standard way? And how would you make it more difficult? Um, that's getting into the nitty gritty of exactly how Africa plays, which I don't know off the top of my head. Um, Africa has, okay, Africa uses the cards as the resource. That's the mechanism in Africa. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think I've given the answer to that, Gerald. You, you shuffle the continent cards and play that way. And sometimes it'll end up being a little easier. Sometimes it'll be a little bit harder, but it's variable when you shuffle those cards. Yeah. I'd recommend experiment with, experiment, experimenting with this. No one has Viticulture World yet. So when you get it, if you're looking to play each continent multiple times and you're not getting the scale of difficulty as you're shuffling those cards, experiment with different, different things and talk about them in the Viticulture Facebook group. We welcome your feedback and ideas there. And that's a great place to have that type of conversation that's so specific to a certain continent. Renee says, have you tried mixing components of different continents for Viticulture World? Or is that something that was discarded in playtesting? Yeah, that definitely... That doesn't that that won't work the way it was designed. Like each continent was definitely designed as as its own specific thing, um, their own specific mini games, and it just uh, it doesn't work to combine them. Um, yeah, that I don't think we really considered that for a while. We wanted each continent to feel like its own area that you're playing within and somewhat against, but mo mostly within every time you play. All right, so there you have it. We have next wednesday hopefully pending canada no weird shipping things happening we should have the viticulture wine crate and viticulture world uh just the expansion if you don't want the whole wine crate uh, available for sale next week if not the week after jamie talked a little bit about um the possibility of working with andrew fister um or alexander fister man i meds are kicking in already um and also we got some cool stuff like what is the surprise that jamie wants to tease but he can't uh kind of on i don't know if the topic was on viticulture world if the topic was on co-op games or what the deal was right there in any case um always fun to get new stonemeyer news and yeah i think that's a pretty good place to call it a week don't you i will be back next week and we will talk about um hopefully this right here going on sale but if not uh just you know hopefully just that one more week but let's go ahead and put let's put that out into the universe next week this thing's going on sale the the shipping to canada everything's gonna go smooth this next week will be the big news um maybe mm, let me know what you want what you want to talk about let's try and let's let's do viticulture world um i'm thinking about maybe my favorite mechanic in it uh let me know if you'd be interested in that in the comments and um you know if you end up printing any of those viticulture world custom wine glass labels 
uh, then I, you know, I, I don't think there's a way to share them in the comments, but if you share them on your Instagram or Twitter and you want to toss a link to that in the, in the comments, um, if, if YouTube flags it as spam, I'll go ahead and take a look at that as long as it looks like a legitimate social media link and, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and approve that so we can see the work that you did. Extra bonus points if you actually affix it to a wine label, huh? Or a wine bottle. That is is it. Thank you so much for doing the the heavy lifting this week, Jamie. I appreciate it. Until next time, take care of yourselves and each other.